So Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we take authority over the airways tonight as children of God, as men and women of God, and we declare your word will go forth as we worship you, as I share truths and ideas that have been helpful to me, that our cups will be filled tonight in Jesus' name. And we thank you that men and women will come to repentance, their souls will be one, your kingdom will be established in a mighty way tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank the Lord. So again, let me get started here. I'm going to go to my notes. I'm sharing with you my own notes, line by line, things that I'm learning. And I'm repeating a lesson tonight that I wasn't able to share on um, last week's Bible study because of some people in the background and comments that were made. I am doing that lesson again, and God opened my eyes to some things uh, even as I went over that, and so I'm going to share those with you tonight. Hopefully, you're able to see everything on the screen. I'm picking up uh, point number 58, uh, where I talked about, and I'm going into tonight, and, and, and I want you to receive it as fresh from the Lord. Again, things God is teaching me as he is growing me, and I'm trusting that he's teaching you as well. We all must grow in God. Amen? Listen, so here's what the Lord was telling me. Every breakthrough can become your breakdown and the end of your dreams if you limit yourself to just where you are now. So what was God telling me as he's growing me, right? Saying you can stop now because the enemy will come along and say, hey, that's enough. That's enough. You don't need to go any further. Satan loves to help you make your last promotion your limit in life. I'm like, wow. So as God is growing and changing me, you know, I can learn how to pray 15 minutes a day. Satan will fight me in that and then work to limit me so I never grow to pray more, right? Satan will fight me going to church and he will be working to stop me from getting to church. And then I'm consistent in going to church. I'm joining the fellowship. I am expanding the, the kingdom of God. I, I am occupying spiritual space. So Satan can't stop me from going to church. So what does he do? He tries to help me to make going to church all that it is to be a child of God. And there are a lot of people who stop right there. So he limits them. You got it? Yeah. That's one of the things Satan does. And God doesn't want us to live that way. So Satan lives and loves to make your what? Last promotion, your limit in life. And a good example we have from the Bible is Judas. Listen, he was promoted to the level of one of 12 disciples in all the world. And that was as far as he went. Can you imagine that? He was there with Jesus, promoted to that level. He was one of the 12. And by the way, Judas was given spiritual gifts by Jesus. He was able to heal the sick, right? Judas was able to do that. One of the 12. And what does Satan do? Work to limit Judas, right? So he never went above that promotion. In fact, as the devil limited Judas, Judas became an enemy to the things of God. You got it? <clears throat> so you and I want to be very careful as God is moving and growing you. Don't let the devil be in charge of your growth. As God was telling me, no, no, no. You got to grow stronger and stronger in the Lord. You have to become more balanced in what you're doing for God, right? Let me go to the next paragraph. Here's the next one. Do not side with the enemy. What? Don't side with the enemy. 
You say, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm not a part of what the enemy is doing. Listen to me. God is working on my heart, right? Don't side with the enemy. I'm saying, Lord, how am I siding with the enemy? Fight the good fight of faith. That's what I'm trying to do. And you ready for this? Accomplish. Let me move this up a little more. Accomplish God-sized feats for him. For someone, a God-sized feat is praying for all of your children to come out of the arms of the enemy and into the arms of God. Do you see it? So, oh, oh this is how it's done. I, I, I share the story, and those of you who've heard me over the years talk about how my mother sacrificed to help her four children. She was a single parent, Chicago, <laughs> and definitely ghetto. I remember stepping over drunks to get into the house. And now as a single man, you know, I was like, I didn't want to step over drunks, let alone a single woman with four children. You understand me? God had to be the angel watching over that door. And then moving to LA, right? And, and mama had a good singing voice. One of the earlier singers, singing groups she invited to one of her concerts was a group later known as, or maybe they were known at that time, the Staples Singers, right? They were able to go on and be famous in music, but mama had to sacrifice that in order to take care of her four little kids. And this one in particular, gave mama a lot of trouble. Do you see that? So what was mama's god size feet? It wasn't preaching to the thousands, no. It was, it was making sure her boy knew Jesus so he could go out and preach to the thousands, right? And mama was an ordained minister, uh, had in her heart to minister the word of God, never was able to get out in the community to the thousands, but she got in her home and got her children right with God. Are you all following me? Say that home is important. Are you following me? Home is important. Huh? Can you guys hear me okay in the chat? Can you hear me in the chat? Somebody let me know. You can hear me, text me or something. Let me know you can hear me. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So you're following along. I'm trying to, I'm trying to monitor all of those at the same time, right? But you can hear me, you can understand. What's going on there? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Let me make sure. Let me double check. Yes, you can hear me. Good, 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 good. Here we go. So let me get back to sharing again and don't want to mess this up. So I was talking about how, listen, what was mama's God-sized goal? Her God-sized feet was making sure her children knew God. You get that? So there were times there was times when mama wasn't able to do things she wanted to do, but she would be on her knees praying her children into the kingdom. So my God-sized feet, right, where I don't limit God, is for me to lock in with him and listen, learn how to accomplish the thing God has. Listen to this. When you overcome the limiting thoughts of the enemy, you are actually fighting the good fight of faith. You got it? Trying to tech, check my text as well. Okay, somebody can't get in a Zoom meeting? Make sure you log into Zoom. Make sure you log into Zoom and you should be able to get in with that same signal, okay? Make sure you log into Zoom and you should be able to get in with the same signal, okay? So now listen to this. A friend of mine was recently telling me um, how she witnessed my growth in God. I, 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 you know, you don't know what people are receiving from you, but she was saying, you know, I could see years ago how you were growing in God. You can't, oh, okay. You couldn't get in because you're calling in from your cell phone. All right. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. I, I'm going to adjust that. Um, I'm getting some texts from individuals who cannot get into the Zoom. 
Thank you for working with me then. You didn't know I could you didn't know I could type a text that fast, huh? Okay, here here's the deal. Here's the deal. One of the things that's happening as we're growing and, and working the bugs out. So pray with me that eventually it's gonna be polished in a nice way. Okay. Um, we can hear you on the phone, okay, but you can't get in a Zoom. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're gonna get that worked out. So the point I was raising. This person was telling me, right? The person was telling me, hey, we, we saw early on how God was growing you. I'm like, really? And we went back, we, we went back in, in the news back in 1998, some things God was moving me to do. And they were saying, wow, we, we hadn't seen, you know, people in your denomination do it that way, right? At that time, I was a denominational pastor. Now I'm more interdenominational, non-denominational, right? But they said, we hadn't seen anybody in, in the denomination do those things. Back in 98, God was shifting me. Do you see it? And so not wanting to limit God, I kept growing and growing in the things of God. I told somebody, look, I'm going all the way with God, amen? I'm gonna get it right, learn it till I got it, right? And in order to go all the way with God, right? I had to overcome what limiting thoughts of the enemy that were in my mind. And I'm talking to somebody tonight. That's that's the issue for you. Do not let the enemy limit you. Grow with God, right? There are barriers. Ooh, let me get this thought in before I go to the next point. Listen to this. The limiting thoughts of the enemy standing in the way are barriers, I say as barriers, right? Let me get that fixed right here. The limiting thoughts of the enemy standing in the way are barriers to what God, whoa, who did this type? <laughs> okay, to what God has promised you and what? Your bloodline, that's your children. That's your children's children, your grandchildren, on and on. So what does the enemy come to do? The enemy comes to limit you Whoa, whoa, I can't go in no further in God. No, you can go further in God, right? And you can fight for you and your bloodline, just as mama had to fight for me. I did not make it easy on mama. No, I did not. I didn't make it easy on her. She had to fight for me. I, I was a black sheep or the, the whatever kind of sheep in the family. They would be in church. Me and my buddy would be outside church trying to break in a car outside the church. We went to church not to worship God. You, you, you follow? Mama had to pray me out of the arms of the enemy. And that is a God-sized feat. Are you getting it? Come on. Can you just type clap in, in the chat if you're getting it? Because I'm clapping my hands over here. Just type clap in the ch chat. Now, listen. Let me give you this, this point. We're going to shift to the next point. You ready? We're going to shift to the next point. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. They're clapping uh, through the messages. Thank you, Cheryl and Jerry. Thank you so much. Jeremiah chapter 1. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? Do you see that? Word of the Lord came to me saying, what, what do you see? Then I said, I see a branch of the almond tree. Then the Lord said unto me, you have seen well, for I am actively watching. Did you get it? See, see, see. Then the Lord says, I am watching. I may have missed one of these C's in my notes because I looked at the first C. I looked it up. What was it about? Okay, let me slow down and get it. What was it about? That was talking about, look, inspect, perceive, consider, have vision. So God is saying, what are you looking at? What are you perceiving? What are you considering, right? And then he said again, look, inspect, perceive, consider, look, inspect, per uh, perceive, consider. But the, the, the fourth C, and after, actually it was the fifth one. I just noticed that 
in my counting. Yes, pastor can count. <laughs> he can't. That is God saying, I am watching over. Let me go back to the top so you can see it. The first C. What do you see? Look, consider, right? Vision. Second C. I see the branch. And God is saying, you have seen well, but God is saying, I am watching over. Do you see it? You are seeing, you are seeing, you're perceiving, right? And God said, I'm watching over. Now look, when God got to the word watching over, that has a primitive root where God is saying, I am alert. You got it? That's where God is saying, I'm not sleeping. While you are sleeping, we're about to go to bed uh, tonight, right? And close our eyes. But God is saying, I'm going to be up watching, right? God is saying, I'm going to be on the lookout, all right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Look out. I'm going to remain awake. I'm going to watch for. Uh, in, 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 the, in the hood, right, we would have a lookout when drug deals were going down, right? And the lookout would be down the street, sometime around the corner, so the popo couldn't sneak up on him, right? Yeah, you, you, you're thinking the guy out in front is the lookout. No, he has lookouts further out right? So that he can see if something is coming before the popo gets there. The, the real man that's running the stuff, man, he's blocks away long, 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 long gone, right? And they catch the little chumps that are left around. Well, God is saying, while you are sleeping tonight, he's on the lookout down the road, from the things that you you cannot know or see what's going to happen in the next minute, the next hour, 30 days down the road, 30 years down the road. But God is saying, I'm on the lookout for what's going to be blessing your life down the road to make sure you do not miss it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's what the devil was trying to stop. Amen. So God used the almond tree. Are you all still there with me? God used the almond tree, which can, which can, can show signs of life during the growing season. Get this, before the other trees are showing signs of life. So this text may be saying to somebody, when other things have not yet started, you got it? To produce around you, God is what? On the lookout, right? God is already at work. I'm going to have to start teaching this standing up so I can start running and shouting. Amen. <laughs> because listen, listen, so I can be in a desert. That's what God is telling me. And God is telling somebody tonight, you got to see this as God is telling me to see it. I don't have to be surrounded by people who are being blessed. I can be right in the middle of a bless, a mess rather, and be blessed, right? Nothing is going on around me, but it's going on with me and God. God is already at work. Did you get it? Oh man, I hope you got it. I'm going to have to just start doing a standing up because I got my shouting shoes on. Amen. Oh, God is already work. So do not, listen, do not compare what God is doing to what is taking place in others around you. Everybody in your neighborhood can be sick, broke, and disgusted, and God can be blessing you. Everybody in your neighborhood losing everything they have, and God is going down the street and making sure blessings keep showing up at your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, these are the thoughts of God. Satan wanna come, wants to come and limit your mind so I can't be blessed because ain't nobody else getting blessed. No, everybody can be all out of money and God can have money showing up at your doorsteps. Oh, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. I, I told you the story about how uh, one person in the Christian community ripped me off. I had saved money and I was going to buy a house. 
And, you know, you got to get thousands for your down payment, right? You know what I'm talking about? And I had put together my little money, my little money. And the person said, in the Christian community, I trusted them. Give me your check. We're going to use this for your down payment and blah, 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 right? And, and they said, and, and you could, listen, and they said, you can move in this condo, amazing condo. I had two apartment sides and all of that. You just go on and move in. We're going to take your little money and you go on and move in. And then somebody who was in charge of the, the homeowners association in the condo came and knocked on the door. They said, who are you? And I'm like, I'm the new owner. You know, this is going to be mine. <laughs> Anybody know what you're talking about? They said, man, whoever sold you that did not have the right to sell it. It hasn't even been sold. Somebody took your money. And I'm like, how could somebody take my money? They were Christians, a child of God, right? And when it dawned on me, now they say, you about to get thrown out in the street. It dawned on me that I had to get my little hips up out of there, find a place to stay. And then the devil stepped in. Anybody know about the devil? He stepped in. And I knew where they lived. They lived, lived in a gated community. I started riding, driving around there. And I've got more and more angry. I think, Lord help me. <laughs> I think I was going to ram their car. I was going to do, you know what I'm saying? Because you got my money and they won't return to my call. I couldn't get up in there in their gated community, right? Little Christian people and stuff. So I was going to choke them. Something, something bad was going to go down. And God began to minister to me. Are you listening to me? And God began to say, no, don't, don't do it that way. Don't do it that way. I'm going to deal with it. Don't do it that way. Back up. Like, no, they got my money. No, no, they, God is saying they have his money. Back up. Don't do it that way. And you know what? Interesting I shared the story with you. Not long after that, somebody came up to me, Pastor Dawson, we just been blessed and we have a blessing to give you. Hallelujah. And anybody know it was more than I had been ripped off by that individual. Are you listening to me? That happened to me. God was saying he's watching over, listen, his work, it doesn't matter what people have done or said about you. They are in trouble if they mess with you. Why? Because you are a child of God. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. How do you overcome the limitations of the enemy? Stay with me because I got good news for somebody. Yes. I, let me go down to that part right here. Let me move down to that because... I hear you. The Lord said, back up and help you learn it like I learned it. And I'll get to the point because I was going to talk to somebody tonight that you have all been out of shape because of how you've been mistreated and lied upon. Stay with me. I got good news for you. But any question, how do you overcome the limitations the enemy has set for you? You overcome the limitation by doing what? Filling your mind and mouth with the word of God, right? So I had to learn, feel my mind, let the thoughts of God come in. Let me speak God's word. Do you have a mind that is a womb that can hold the thoughts of God? Even when your circumstances see no way out, it does not matter where you were born. God has, if God has his way with you, he will demolish the structures that have kept you in the invisible prison in your mind as you cooperate with him. How? God, how are you going to do it? Here's the, the cheat code right here. What you need to do, memorize scripture. How do you memorize scripture? Okay, I got to stop it. Give me 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I'll try to get it all done in 10 minutes. Memorize scripture. How do you memorize scripture? Read it 10 times. Write it 10 times. Say it 10 times. Sing it 10 times. And do it again. Read it. Write it. Sing it. Say it. Walk around and do it 10 times. Pray over it. Ask God to put it in, right? Learn how to pray in the spirit. Amen? The Bible talks about that. Also, pray in your understanding. There are things I pray about 
in my spiritual language. I don't have an understanding of all of that, but I pray in the spirit, build myself up. But I also pray in my understanding as well, amen? Walk in love. What do I mean by that? That person God told me not to go after, God went after them. They, they received the punishment greater than a little bit of money they took from me, amen? Yes, walk in love, seeing unto the Lord. Don't hate people because of skin color or, or gender, right? Don't hate people because of that, no. Men and women, don't be mad with, women don't be mad with men, men don't be mad with women, no. Love people, right? Sing unto the Lord, worship him, bless his holy name, amen? You can do those kind of things. Let me get back to where the size I was at, right? You can do those things. Uh, learn how to do those things before God, okay? Then you will discover, like Elijah, that the hand of God will come upon you and you will actually run faster than the chariots of Ahab. Are you still with me? So sometimes God needs to open your eyes and help you see what is really taking place in your life. Oh, man. That's a, that's a whole nother lesson. We're going to get there, okay? Your almond trees are budding right now. Woo! Listen, I know, I know what I'm talking about. Everything you're looking for, God has already put it inside of you. Hallelujah. And if you can learn what it looks like when he puts it in there, everything is right there. I want you to pray with me tonight, Lord. And this is the prayer I pray. And I've, I've even added to that. Lord, do what? Open my eyes to see what you are doing in my life right now. Can you just pray that prayer? Open my eyes, Lord. Help me to see your hand and your work in me. Your hand at work in me, right? Open my eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, open our eyes. Hallelujah. And help us to remember, God, you have your own timetable and schedule for what will happen in our lives in Jesus' name. Okay? We're moving right on. Six more minutes. Stay with me. Learn how to do what? Apprehend or capture thoughts. <laughs> uh, we taught you how to capture thoughts, right? Right? Remember, you speak the word. So a thought comes through that's off. You start speaking the word. And the, the words will help you capture that thing. If thoughts of bitterness or fear begin to flow in your mind, you speak to those thoughts. You tell them, listen, fear is coming. Bitterness is coming. I'm going to hate white people because they did this. I'm going to hate black people because they did this. I'm going to hate Mexicans or whatever. I'm going to hate them and I'm going to hate that one. No, you start telling those thoughts. Listen, I am an object of love not a bitterness, right? Love cast out fear. Love destroys bitterness. My God is love. I am a son, a daughter. I am not capable of drowning in hatred. I am only capable of doing what? Growing in the capacity to love each and every day. I love more. I love better. Amen in Jesus' name. Man, if somebody's getting this, could you put a five in the chat? Just put a five in the chat. Pastor, I'm getting this. This is the message the devil was trying to stop. And thank God, all he did was get me fired up to do it again in Jesus' name. Amen. By doing this, this process, you will have arrested the demon bringing those thoughts. What is the process? I start speaking the word, right? You keep arresting those thoughts until you put those thoughts in prison and what happens? You walk free. And here's the part I want to talk about. Yes, somebody, somebody listening to me, you may have gone through a nasty divorce. You know what a nasty divorce is? Yeah. I'm not just talking about you fighting over stuff. I'm talking about where you say stuff to hurt the person that you've been with for years. You know, when you live with somebody for years, you've been married to, they 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 know that your 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 poop does not smell like warm peanuts, right? <laughs> they know it's like, ooh. they know things about you. You don't want anybody else to know, right? You may have gone through a nasty divorce where that person said things about you. I mean, it cut you deep, right? 
Don't walk in bitterness. No, release them to God. Maybe you had a, a bad breakup, right? Something like that may have taken place in your life, right? Or let me get my page straight here again. Or you may have been cheated on. You know, being cheated on is horrible. Sometimes men don't think about that or women don't think about how horrible it is for you to cheat on somebody. Or maybe you've been publicly shamed or ridiculed, amen. Like the woman caught in adultery, they dragged her out in public, right? And she had a right to be bitter with all of the men who drug her out and didn't drag the man out, right? Yeah, but she had to learn to let go. So what are the looming thoughts you have allowed in your life for 25 years that have kept you in bondage? Somebody listening to me tonight, today, whenever you watch this, you are in bondage because of the thoughts you allowed to go around in your mind. What are some of my crazy thoughts? These are some of mine. They may not be yours. I am timid and I do not deserve to be blessed or helped by God. Right? I would feel intimidated. Other people were standing up. I remember Brother Turpo used to talk to me, Pastor, pick your head up. Pick your head up. Pick your head up. But here I am. I don't deserve to be blessed because of all the mess and things I've done. Right? But I was not walking in the forgiveness of God. Here's another big one. I must earn everything on my own. Right? So when that person stole that money from me, I had to go get it back. God is saying, no, let me get it back. And he gave it back with some plus plus. Other people are better than me. Have you ever dealt with that? Yeah, you think everybody else is better than you? Why? Because they have a degree and they have this, man. <laughs> the people who hurt me must be cursed forever. They would never change and never be forgiven. No, man, the people who hurt you, they may have gotten right with God and gone on about their business and here you are still stuck, right? Please know that the persons you have refused to forgive are not bound by your refusal to forgive. They are free going about their daily living while you are bound by the spirits of bitterness. Learn to forgive and be freed from your bitterness. I told the story on last week when I was sharing it about a wife whose husband cheated on her. I heard about somebody just recently, the husband did only cheat. He moved the mistress in right down the street from his house so his wife can see him going back and forth. But in this story, the husband cheated on the wife 25 years and she cursed him before God and said all kind of nasty things about him. And finally, finally, God, God spoke to her and he, he shared with her his approach to dealing with things, right? Let me share that again. She pleaded for God to strike this man down Finally, after cursing her, she heard God asking her, can't you find it in your heart to forgive him? And that day, that day, she found it in her heart to forgive him. She forgave her husband. And the very day her husband died, the day she came out of her prison, that was the day God pronounced judgment. Listen, I've seen what God has done to my enemies. I don't want that on anybody. No, no, no. I pray for my enemies. God, forgive them. Be merciful because I've seen, I've seen what happened. I want to stay out of the prison. Amen. And deal with the scripture. Beloved, never, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for whose wrath? Oh my God. Woo. And what does God say? Vengeance is mine. So listen, if baby daddy ain't treating you right, pray for him. Pray that he gets it right. Amen. Amen. Pray that he gets it right because he keep mistreating you. God is going to get him. Amen. Luke 9 talks about the Samaritans who were prejudiced against Jesus and didn't want him to come, right? Because he was on his way to Jerusalem. But sometimes we have to learn how to just say, I forgive you. Amen? Yeah. Just say, I forgive you. Set people free in Jesus' name. Now, the people I forgive, now, doesn't mean we're going we're gonna to be breaking bread and all that hanging out together because they have to change, right, and show evidence of the fruit. But I, I take myself out of prison, listen, by giving them the gift of forgiveness. 
and releasing them today. Hallelujah. I walk in freedom. That's the prayer. I will be set free from the prison house of bitterness. Can you pray that over your life? Hallelujah. Hatred gone out of my life. Unforgiveness. People have stolen from you. People have ridiculed you. People have hurt you. People who could have helped you didn't help you. Father, we release them in Jesus' name. We set free all of our enemies and we place their destinies in the hand of God, the, the ex-husband, the ex-wife, the ex-boyfriend, hallelujah, the one who, who blocked your promotion on the job, the one who stole your retirement, put it in the hands of Jesus, amen. We pray that God would be merciful to those who despitefully used us and said all manner of evil against me falsely. Today, I forgive the ex-husband, the ex-wife, the ex-boyfriend, the ex-girlfriend, wherever you are. I release them and I turn toward God to receive and walk in the destiny God has spoken over my life. Let me get this and we got to stop. My current room is not my burial chamber. I will live and not die, amen. From here, I will arise. Listen to me, mama, listen to me. You will arise and shine and give glory to God, amen? I have a destiny that God has spoken over my life. I will not be tied down. Come on, somebody pray that and believe it. Every wrong deed that anyone did to me, I set them free now. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of his cross, I am against no man, no woman, no political party, no presidential candidate, hallelujah, no nation. Oh God, look upon me and let your mercy do what? Cause my face to shine in Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and thank the Lord. Listen, when you watch this on YouTube, be kind enough, be kind enough to like it and share to help build up the algorithms, all that kind of thing. But thank you for walking with me on Friday night Bible 